Yeah, because uh, now I have more increased parent care duties. <laughs> but no worry, we will still be doing T-Rex run. And yes, and so today we'll be continuing what we left off. And so this is the game so far. Let's just play it for you. So we have a cactus appearing and then you need to jump over the cactus. Okay, and then the cactus are in interspersed between intervals of 1 second and 3 seconds. And then it will get faster and faster and faster. Okay, so right now uh, what we want to do is... Okay, so the getting faster and faster looks like it's uh, getting faster a bit too fast. Yeah, so we need to make sure that uh, we don't get faster so fast. Uh, that's one thing. But today, I think the main thing I want to do is... Oh, got it. The main thing I want to do is uh, firstly to create the the bird. Okay, so we do have a bird so far in the sprite sheet. And this bird is supposed to fly to the player. So maybe what we can do is we can instantiate a bird prefab. So we can maybe instead of just having a cactus, okay, uh, we can also do a bird, a cactus. And you know, the, cat, the birds can have different kinds of birds as well. Uh, or the cactus could have different kinds of cactus, all right. Uh, depending on what we want the dinosaur to to experience. So firstly, let's uh just go to the sprite sheet. Okay, we go to the sprite editor, sprite mode. We go multiple. Okay, and then we can go to the sprite editor. Apply this over here. Let's just slice it by grid by cell counts. So columns three, rows three, and uh, you will see that when we slice this. We already have the, like, the the bird being sliced over here one by one, and that's good enough. So after we slice this bird, you can see that the bird will appear like this. I'm just thinking whether this bird is it is it a white background already or it's a transparent background because that will affect. Okay, let's just put one bird into the scene. Okay, where's the bird now? Maybe we put the all in layer two. So the bird looks like it's not transparent. And that is a, a problem actually, because uh, we want the bird to be transparent. So let's just delete this thing. Okay. And you see this this uh, bird thing that we downloaded the last time. Okay. Let's try to make this transparent. Okay, how do we make this transparent? Uh you just go to any paint software. Alright. In this case, I'm using Krita. So uh, we go to any paint software. Oh yeah, for those uh, viewers, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask me. I'm okay to just answer your questions. I'm monitoring my chat as well. Yeah, but um, so today I'm intending to create another enemy for the Dino Run game, which is the bird. Yeah, so let's see. Um, let's just drag the bird in. Okay. I mean, if there's time, we'll do sound effects or so, but if not, I'm just happy just creating this bird itself. So uh, let's just paint this with... Uh, yeah, that, that will do. Actually, that's that's all, actually. <laughs> that's all we need to do. We just need to make this a, a PNG. And if I dra drag this in here, there we go. Very nice. Okay, so in our inspector right now, okay, in the inspector, you can see that um, it's now totally transparent, which is a good sign for us. Okay, and uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, hello? Okay, let me do a sound test. Sound check, sound check, sound check. Okay, I can hear myself. Okay, that's good. Uh, sprite editor, let's go here. Okay, we first need to set this to multiple. Okay, then we go to sprite editor. Apply this to be multiple. Slice again by grid by cell count, three by three, slice. So you can see that each of this is one slice. Apply. Okay, so over here we have bird. Let's just drag this whole series here. Okay, and then we just add an animation. So we do have an animation we call this bird. Okay, so we can just drag this bird animation into a bird prefab. Like this. Yeah, straight away the animator will be created already. So you can see that the bird controller is here. And actually, the bird controller only needs to do one thing, which is to flap its wings. So if we just click play, you will see that the bird will be flapping its wings already. Oh. Okay. 
Okay, we have to go to the bird animator and see what's going on. Okay, so okay, let's see. Okay, it enters into this bird layer. Okay, and in this uh, bird animation, so upon entry, it goes into this bird animation, uh, which actually should continue animating. If you if you ask me, the bird should continue flapping its wings. So unless this bird zero, you know, sorry, this is the animator. Unless this did not already do the, so let's see. Okay, let's, let's just take a look at this. Drag a model into this preview area, sure. sure. Yeah. Apparently, we did not create the animation properly. Okay, create. Animation. So now we call this bird one. Let's delete this. Okay, so this bird one is supposed to, let's see, let's view this bird sprite. So you can see that this is it's like this. It should be okay. You can, you can see that the sprite is going one by one in this animation sheet, which I think is good enough already for now. So what we need to do is just drag this bird one inside here, delete this. Straight away, we'll go to this transition. And this bird one, we just make the loop time infinite. So we just keep looping. So it should already flap its wings, if I'm not wrong. Ah, there we go. So the bird is already flapping its wings. Okay, somehow I'm not able to jump. Okay, yeah, now I can. So that's one thing we need to solve. So you see, <laughs> my, my, my dragon can double jump. I mean, my dinosaur, which is kind of not right. Because if not, I can just keep avoiding everything and you know, I can get a top high score just by jumping like that. This looks like some RPG game where you know you follow the bird. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so I I would like to I'm just thinking whether my bird should remain this size or a smaller size. Because you know dinos are supposedly bigger than birds. So if my bird is this big, then, you know, it's harder for the player to avoid also. So okay, I'm just thinking how I would like to do the bird. Okay, so there are two ways to go about reducing the size of the object. One is using a sprite sheet. We can uh, actually change the sprite to maybe 200 pixels per unit. Okay, we can apply this and the bird will be smaller after that. So it has now changed to 200 pixels. So you can see that. Uh, this one way another way was to just do a scaling but i think the, the sprite sheet method is better because you change the pixels directly so you can see that now we have a bird that is flapping its wings the dino is walking i think it's kind of cool actually yeah i wonder if i should let the player do a double jump yeah that, that's totally possible oh ouch that must have hurt yeah <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking whether my animation frame per second I want to increase it. I think don't need. Yeah, we don't have to increase it. Because as the thing goes faster and faster, the dino can actually walk faster and faster. Yeah, that's one, one way to show this. I see now we have a bird that's flying like that. Okay, the bird should be flying in the other uh, in the, the other direction. So okay, firstly, let's just put this as a prefab. Okay, how to make the bird fly the other direction is to actually change the scale of the uh, the, the, the x-axis. Uh, over here, you can actually flip x. Yeah. Or, you know, you can also change the scale of this x-axis. But flipping x is, uh, you, you change it via the sprite renderer, which is fine. So now we have this coming already. Okay, so uh, we have this cactus spawner. Okay. Okay, before that, uh, we do want to add in two things here. One is a rigid body 2D. And here, just like the cactus, okay, so we go to the prefect cactus, you see the rigid body is actually a dynamic one. Okay, so we should add a dynamic one so that we can apply like gravity to it. Okay. Actually, we don't really need gravity for this, but yeah, it's... 
I guess we can also do it as static. Yeah, it shouldn't really matter too much. Yeah, we can make the bird be dynamic or static. It's fine. Because the bird looks like it's flapping its wings and flying already. So dynamic is fine. Uh, gravity scale can be zero if you want to use dynamic. Okay. And the main thing is we need to add a collider 2D. So I'm thinking whether I want a rectangle or a circle. I think I will use a circle collider. Okay, I'll use a circle collider and maybe reduce the radius to 0 0.4 maybe. 0 0.3. Okay, we want it such that you know when the player hits the bird, it doesn't feel that it's unfair. So maybe we'll just do the for the, the chief part of the bird here, which is like near the front. You can just do for the bird here. Something like that. Yeah, something like that would be good. Just any bigger okay, I think the circle collider is good. So if we play this, we can see the circle collider in action and see whether is it okay. So let's go to the scene. So Okay, so one thing is that the circle collider doesn't exactly like move together with the bird sprite. Okay, so you can see that once we do the circle collider, it doesn't exactly go. So maybe we should just align it to the center of the bird like that. So once we play this scene, yeah, more or less it targets the main part of the bird which is good enough for us, for our purposes. So this circle is somewhere in the middle of where the bird is. <coughs> so I think that's good enough. So that will be the circle collider that we use. Okay, so um, again, like for example, the cactus. Okay, the tag is called remover. Okay, it's because of the, if we go back to our scripts, we have this, uh, okay, the remover is actually on this removal collider. So we do have a script called remover, I, re I remember. So I think it's called move left, it's under move left. So in the move left script, okay, if the game object, if Remover, then we remove the game object. So we will call this collider remover. Okay, and in the dyno itself, okay, if you collide with any collider other than the ground, we load game over. So um, that's great. So we just need to call this bird with a tag called remover. All right, and that should do already. And uh, what we want to do now is we want to go to the cactus spawner. Okay, we want to do another game object called bird. Okay, so we random this one, we also random the, the game object. So maybe we have a list of potential um, game objects that we want to form, that we want to spawn. So maybe cactus, but maybe we just call it uh, obstacles. So over here, we spawn the obstacle here. So over here, um, what we can do is we can do this. Uh, random dot range okay obstacles dot length dot length i think it's just dot length like that okay let's just google it okay find length of collection of a uh, list in c sharp okay so to get the link to get the lengths I think it's the list dot count property. So let's let's do this. Uh, obstacles dot counts. So random dot range, right? Okay, let's see the random dot range. Okay, uh, Unity documentation. So in random dot range, okay, uh, we have this thing here where we can actually. Oh wait a minute. Uh, random dot range is here. Uh, integer max mean inclusive. Integer max exclusive. So we start with zero and then we count all the way to the size of the obstacles. So over here, 
okay we have this random dot range right so we instantiate here rather than just having a cactus we just put obstacles okay so over here maybe we just have it as a maybe integer selected for be this okay so obstacles selected then uh, this dot transform okay over here the this dot transform might have to change okay because uh, our bird needs to be slightly higher than the cactus but for now this should do okay so I just created like a list method to generate my obstacles one by one. So I think that should work. Okay, let's see. Oh, no errors. Wow. Okay, that's kind of unexpected. Okay. Okay, so there's this uh on the bird itself. I should actually put a move move left script. Okay, so that the, the when spawn the bird will actually move to the left. Okay, and then let's uh, apply all. Okay, to the prefab. So in the cactus spawner, I will give this bird. I shouldn't give this bird as a prefab. I should give the. Okay, under obstacles. Okay, let's go to our prefabs. The cactus spawner. Okay, under obstacles, right? We have two obstacles now. The first will be the cactus, and the second will be the bird. Okay, and uh, that should do for now. Uh, this cactus spawner should receive the two already from the... So when you change the prefab, it will change the object itself directly. So you can see that the bird is now spawned. But right now, it's like kind of boring because the bird doesn't really alter its heights. So what we want to do is we want to have a start height for the bird and an end height of the bird so that the bird will swoop down to the player. You see? So right now, it's either... A a bird or a cactus. I think the bird height is just right. Uh, but we also want to make the bird such that it's possible for the bird to go like low. Okay, because uh, if the bird, the bird is low, it kind of uh, means that the player needs to choose between like jumping. Okay, so is it like... I think the speed increase is a bit too fast. Let's just go to the script for the game manager and just change it. So maybe instead of increasing it by score divided by 10, maybe score divided by 20. Yeah, because uh, I feel that the speed of the game is a little too fast. The progression is a bit too fast. We want the player to be playing for maybe like a good two, one to two minutes before we actually kill them off. Yeah, you know, it's not very fun to play a game, you know. Imagine Flappy Bird, you die in 10 seconds. Uh, is it fun to play Flappy Bird? I don't know, but but I don't want the game <laughs> where you die so fast. You you should at least enjoy the process of being killed. Okay, that sounds a bit sadistic, but you know you should enjoy a little bit before you eventually are forced to lose the game. Yeah, because survival games there's always a limit. So I think so far it's good. So there's a cactus, there's a bird. Okay, there's a cactus and a bird, and. Oh, 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 that was cheating. That was cheating. I cheated. Yeah. I think that was like kind of impossible to survive, right? Because the bird was like so near the... Okay, so now the bird is like a little easy because it seems to me that like you don't have to jump at all for the bird. So I don't want that to happen. I want the player to have to, you know, decide for themselves whether to jump or not by the trajectory of the bird. So, okay, so for the bird itself, we need to have a clever way of uh, letting the bird swoop from a starting point to an ending point, okay? Uh, now, you see, now now the game is getting fun. Now everything is getting faster and faster. Yes, 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 okay, that's the effect. Now, the only thing is probably the bird needs to change a bit. Okay, the cactus itself also, uh, we could have like multiple cactus spawning at one time. So we can change the type of cactuses that appear okay uh by giving it more prefabs because anyway the cactus is just a prefab we can just random randomly initiate some cactus can be bigger some cactus can be longer yeah and the bird can start and end at different heights all right oh the bird is like a dagger right now oh i'm surviving pretty well yeah i'm quite good at this game <laughs> i'm just being egoistic here but 
Whoa. He's doing pretty well at my own game. Whoa. Whoa. I thought I died. Okay, but apparently I didn't. Okay, let's see whether is it possible to collide with my own bird. Okay, that that will. That will oh wow they just like slight yes okay i did it i did it i did it okay so um let's remove this uh bird here because we already have it as a prefab okay um okay maybe i shouldn't remove the bird. okay where's the cactus spawner cactus spawner is here it's at a position where it's at negative 3.8 okay okay let's see uh sorry uh is at y equals zero and uh 8.67 Okay, so the bird is here at y equals zero. So let's see, let's try y equals minus one. Uh, is minus one good? Minus one is okay. Y is zero. Y is one. Okay, let's see where exactly is the tip of the screen. So let's just see. About four. I think maybe about four is good. So maybe from from uh, minus one, minus one to four. Yeah, the bird should from be from minus one to four. So okay, um let's see. Okay, uh now this is the bird, right? Uh let's see the move left script. Okay, so over here we have maybe a boo is bird. Okay, so uh maybe this can be a public one so that we can change it from the outside of the object itself. So at the start uh, we just add force to the rigid body. You see, I just added a force. Okay, so in this case, we need to add a force such that um, by the time the bird moves from the left to the right, it sort of like flies up or down accordingly to where it, where it got spawned. So um. I think we can just make the starting position of the bird fix and then we just apply different forces to the bird. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense for the bird to fly up like that. You see, because uh, it sort of defeats the point because the player doesn't need to move at all. So the bird should should be I don't know. Should the bird be going up and down? Up and down, up and down. Uh, because I'm doing the add force manner, I cannot really do a sine wave for my for my x axis. It doesn't really make sense here. So I will probably still use the add force method to add a certain force to the bird to make it like go down. Okay, so over here, if it's bird, okay, so if it's a bird, then we. my rigid dot add force okay we also add this based on the game manager dot speed okay so we also add force so in this case let's add a force of up okay so over here we do have to try out how this works so let's just let's just save this first okay delete this bird okay in the game manager so in the prefabs, we have the bird here. And in this bird, mm -hmm. I'll put this bird to be true for this. Okay, then let's see what happens. So I add a, a upwards force to the bird also when it spawn. So, okay, so far so good. The cactus is fine. The cactus is fine. Okay, so as you can see that uh, when the bird is spawned, it sort of goes up straight away. Which is not what we want. Yeah. So that's a case of the bird um, going up too much. <laughs> so uh, maybe what we could do is uh, we could um, as an entry for the bird we could do a few animations of different trajectories for these birds and then we just add them as separate birds one by one mm, yeah that's possible then i don't have to do this thing here i can just let the animations do the job okay what do i mean by this okay, what do i mean by this so let's just not put the no more blue is bird 
So this will purely just move left. You can set the, tra the trajectory of the bird itself in the animation directly. So let's just drag back this bird here. Okay, so we create a bird that um, basically just doesn't uh, doesn't go up and down at all. Okay. Okay, so this is one bird. We do have another bird, maybe this bird here, that uh, will change the animation. It will make it wiggle, like go up and down like that. You know, like like in a in a wave. And we do that by the animation of the bird. So over here, in our animations for this bird, the animator. Okay, so firstly, what we need to do is we need to go to the bird animation here. It's called bird one. Okay, we call it. Maybe here we call it bird straight, because it really goes straight. And this one we call it bird curve. Okay, bird curve. Uh, let's just open up the animator. So in bird curve. Um, how come I cannot see the sprite? Ah, there we go. Okay, did I just do something? Okay, yeah, I just changed it. So, uh, what I want to do is I want to add in... Okay, I basically just want to add in... Okay, maybe we don't have to change the animation, but what I want to do is I want to change the y-axis of this bird. Okay, I want to change the y-axis of this bird. Maybe let's just, just delete. Okay, I'm just thinking what's the best way to do this. Okay, uh, this is my first time that I'm thinking about this. Okay, one way to do this is to create a new uh create a new game object. So we call this game object bird container, maybe. So within the bird container is the bird. So when we spawn that time we spawn the bird container, but this bird here we can do whatever we want to we want, we want to do with it. Like we want to move up or down based on certain time we can actually change it inside here. So so maybe we can have a script inside here that like this is the bird container. Which we can do a, a reset transform here. Okay, the reset to zeros and then the bird will be also we can just do a, a reset of a transform here. So the bird will be at zero zero position, and then uh, we can add a script to this bird. Okay, over here, we can add a script to this bird. Okay, so the move left script. Okay, because the move left adds a rigid uh, a force to the rigid body. Okay, so the rigid body is in the. So the rigid body is here. So I need to have my move left script here. Okay, but I want to also have the the transform of my vector or uh, the position. I want to have this transform of my position change as well. So I will need to separate my I'll need to separate my um, sprite renderer, okay, which will be used to change this from I need to separate my sprite renderer from the animator. So maybe let's just you know remove the animator component here no but the animator is uh sorry we re remove the rigid body here we remove the circle collider here no the circle collider should stay with this object and the rigid body should stay with this object also okay simple we add a rigid body to this to the parent because uh the child will take on the rigid body of the parent so that would that would be good enough Okay, so this bird container, and then in this bird here, we can then move this bird up and down. So to just simulate what will happen is we can move this bird up and down, and the collider will also move up and down along with how we move this. So this, so when we put this bird container here, there will be a move left script over here that will move the entire thing to the left. Okay, based on this rigid body, and then this bird will be free to do whatever we want to do. So we take away the move left script here. Okay, so this bird is like a subset of the parent bird, and then it will be able to move up and down in the parent bird, in the parent bird. Okay, and over here we still have the animation here. 
It's just that over here we do cater for ourselves the liberty of of moving up and down. Okay, within this bird container. So okay, let's uh, let's just try to do that. How do we move this bird up and down? So for that, uh, let's just <laughs> create a script. And then for lack of a better word, we can call this script up, up and down. <laughs> Such a lame word, but yeah. So okay, so for up and down, uh, it's basically going to be like this. Uh, we do have to have. Okay, so we want to have this dot transform. We actually don't need this dot transform. Transform dot position equals to new vector tree. Okay, so we do have like a position like okay so over here we will have a vector tree initial pos okay so let's just put this initial pos outside so firstly we when we start we want to get the position of this uh, which is zero 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 okay but it could be different okay we we not sure what the initial pos would be so when we start the time we will get we will, we will take the initial pos and uh Take the transform dot position and store it in initial pos. So over here, vector tree initial. Okay, so it'll be a new vector tree. It'll be an initial pos plus. Okay, actually you don't need a new vector tree. You can just take vector tree dot up. Okay, times. Okay, this is the cool part. Time dot delta time. Times move speed. Okay, so we have a move speed here, which is like. Okay, so uh, let's just do some public variables and private variables okay so we do have a move speed here that we will set it to be maybe one for, for the time being i mean I, i'm not sure how this would turn out so let's just try to set it as one first so um the vector dot up times time dot delta time okay so there needs to be a way to do a sign curve okay so time dot delta time is not enough we need to do okay so based on the sign curve okay so i can't remember what's the function for mathf.sign but you know there's always uh there's always help in the unity manual which you could use so mathf.sign so basically we're using a sign curve to approximate the bird swooping up and down which will look really cool actually yeah so mathf.sign okay um here and the angle inside here so the angle is is a float in radians it doesn't really matter i mean it's based on time dot delta fine and move speed okay so i think this is uh good enough okay so let's see whether there's any errors if i put this but okay I attach the up and down script inside here is there any errors oh wait I, I can't attach the up and down script so there must be some errors already oh i can attach the up and down script very nice so let's just you know apply this to all okay why not we just you know unpack the prefab completely okay in the prefabs we just delete this bird okay, and then we just put in the bird container instead of bird Okay, so we do have a bird container and in our cactus spawner we will then just you know just put the bird container inside there so the bird should go up and down okay and the maximum height that the bird will go up and down with is a vector tree dot up which means like basically um it's kept at a position of a one maximum one so like if you look here okay here actually should be zero and zero so so it means that the y axis okay should okay, let's see the y axis should go from one to minus one so so that that will be the range that it hovers and i think that's actually good enough because um any higher the player doesn't need to worry any lower the player doesn't worry also so this hovering is kind of good so there could be different patterns like from here you can swoop down from height of two you can swoop down to zero and from height of zero, you can swoop up to two. So we will program these two different movements also separately in the up and down state. Yeah, with this up and down state, we can control. Then for the bird container, will be the rigid body and the move left script to just move the bird to the left. 
Hi there, Element. Yep, sorry, I just saw your message. Did I miss much? <laughs> how are you? Yep. Okay, so uh, let's see how our bird looks like. It looks like it's not really... It looks like it's not really moving up and down. So I'm kind of curious. Maybe my time to oscillate up and down is too fast. Okay, so in order to, to check, okay, we're going to need to take the bird. Yeah, no worries. I just I just started also. Yeah. I hope to like stream games nowadays. Yeah, probably one one stream a week. Okay, because I have some commitments nowadays. School has started. <laughs> yeah, but I, I do try to stream now. Uh once or twice a week, depends on my, my schedule. But Sunday is always free, so Sunday is fine. So now I'm very curious, okay, what's wrong with my bird? Okay, so we have a circle collider here. Okay, it doesn't matter, but we have this up and down script. Okay, but in my up and down script, I do have this thing called move speed. Okay, I didn't make it public. Okay, let's make it public. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you're also starting. Nice. Oh, no. MathF doesn't contain a definition for sign. So it might be a capital S. Yeah, so it means that this thing wasn't really run properly. Okay, so now it should it should show an oscillation up and down, like what I think it should. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why is it not going up and down? Is it not moving? I mean, transform.position is changing. But it's changing like very minusculely. Okay, how about this? Let's just change the move speed to maybe 0 0.001. I don't know. I mean, maybe the time dot delta time is moving it a bit too fast. It's definitely moving, but it's, it's not moving much up and down. So maybe, you know, Mathf dot sign returns between minus one and one, right? So, hmm. Okay, let's just uh, bypass this by by just putting vector three dot up inside the transform dot position. Uh, I want to see, I want to see what's the the height of this. So it's one, it's it's okay. So it looks like so it looks like this transformer position is correct. It's just this sign here, like have been maybe this thing here is like too sparse, maybe time dot delta time. So this is in radians, right? Okay, for values outside of the acceptable range. Okay, there's this range here, but I definitely did not exceed the range because like time dot delta time times move speed not going to exceed the range. So maybe what I can do is I can do this. Yeah, so that will give me an idea of like what's the, the range uh, of values that's printing up. So let me just get rid of the printing here. I printed something uh, to tell me the time earlier. So I think it's, I think it's in fact the spawner. Yeah, let's just Take away this. Okay. Time does not contain a definition called delta time. Now you tell me. <laughs> I thought we were okay with this time dot delta time. So the issue is, is, is with the time dot delta time.
Yeah, type it wrongly. O O O D L A T this time. <laughs> One spelling mistake can cause this already in the game. So I want the bird to move up and down, like in a sine wave. So let's see. It's like kind of small the values here. Zero point zero one. I'm not sure whether is it because my move speed is too slow. Maybe if my move speed is ten, will it change the way that is animated? Yeah, if it's 10, it's always at 1 now. Oh, wait, wait, no, no. It's always at 1 because I, I change it. So let's see. If it's 10. 0 0.04, 0 0.01. 0 0.03. It seems to be kind of not going... Oh, it's the interval in seconds from the last frame to the current one. Okay, what I want is not delta time. What I want is the total time that has been elapsed. So, time elapsed. Probably is time dot time. This is the start of the application. Yeah. So it should be time dot time, not time dot delta time. I want the total time elapsed. So delta time is the change between frames. I made an error here. So okay, so this should do it. Okay, and then the bird. Let's just do um do it with uh with mostly of one, and then let's see whether the bird oscillates up and down. So oh nice. Do you see that? Oh, the bird just ate up the cactus the colliding. Okay, so I do have an issue here. Something, Something's there. Something's not moving. So it looks like the transform position uh, takes into account the initial position and keeps getting shifted here. Okay, although my bird itself is under... Uh, okay, so in my prefabs, my bird container itself okay, should already you know, be moving left according to this script because I applied a rigid body here. Okay, but because of this uh but because of this issue where I do an up and down script here, okay, it's not exactly moving left anymore. So uh what what could be done is okay, instead of calling a move left over here, okay. Maybe instead of calling this, I don't do this. I instead manually shift. Because it looks like it's not very compatible with this. So maybe I don't have the move left script at all. I don't add force by a rigid body. Okay, or, or I mean, I could also add force, but you know, over here, I take in the... I only change the position for... I only change the position for the x, the y axis. So x axis I can remain. So you know I can do this new. Okay, so new vector three. Okay, so the first one will be transform dot position dot x. I keep the x. Okay, then we take the trans, we take the initial pos dot position dot y. Okay, this is a bit convoluted, but it works, I hope. Okay, and then the last variable will be zero. So instead of uh, modifying the x value, I modify the y value directly. Only the y value. Okay, and I'm not sure whether this will work, but it's worth a try. Okay. Vector 3 does not contain a definition for position. Oh. So this one is initial pass dot y.
class cannot be applied to type float and vector tree. So this one will just be one, actually just like that. I'm not sure whether this will work, but uh, let's just try it out and see whether it works. You no, know, it's always like that. Oh, nice. Do you see that? It's moving up and down already. And the only thing that I did, oops. <laughs> yeah, I'll need to change that. Yeah, the only thing that I did was to just... Oh, nice. That's kind of irritating now, right? Don't you think the bird? Yeah, so all I need to do is to just uh randomly start off at uh iteration. Okay, so it's either soup up or soup down, depending on the iteration. Because once it goes fast enough, right, you can see that the bird is either soup up or down. I kind of like this bird already. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to guess where the bird will go to. Okay, so all we need to do is just to change the face of the bird. So the bird, instead of going up or down, it the bird could actually, I think the starting position of the bird is nice, and the swooping is nice. Okay, uh, one thing that could be done is maybe I can just make this do times this, so the variation of up and down will be higher. Okay, and uh, what I can do is I can change my bird container. The bird, okay, the bird can actually start off a little higher we don't have to start off at this position we can start with the y at one okay i mean i can keep bird container but actually there's no real need to already yeah, i think we just keep it because my move left script is good yeah i could also move the move left <coughs> manually by updating the position but actually i'm, I'm like okay so uh, you see that so now the bird is either going up or down. Okay, so it's like a little deterministic here because uh, there is some form of variation in terms of the, the bird movement. But I think setting it at one is good because it spans the entire range of the player's position. And so, you know, if the player jumps, he might hit the bird also. So you know, we, we give it some sort of like prediction that you need to guess where the bird is. Okay, uh, in fact, actually where the bird comes in is kind of good enough now because uh, the player doesn't exactly know where the bird will spawn. That's like a sort of a randomness in the bird's position. So, I mean, unless you can monitor the random algorithm. Okay, if not, actually there's a way to do this. <laughs> okay, there's a way to do this easily. So, you see over here, we have time dot time plus times move speed, right? We can actually have another thing here. So our random factor, okay, so over here is, so the random factor is really just a random number. So <laughs> random factor equals to random dot uh, range. So we can add some variability in our bird by, by adding a, a number such that the bird, when it spawns, it doesn't spawn at the same phase of your sine wave. It spawns differently. So the swooping, the sine wave pattern, all this is already kind of like inbuilt in this. So we don't know where the bird will spawn. That's one thing. See, even I don't know where the bird spawns now because of the random factor. And I honestly think this is good enough. Oh, oh that was lucky. Yeah, in fact, the bird is kind of annoying right now. Yeah, because you don't know whether to avoid it or not. See, now you need to jump for this. Yeah, I think it's okay to still let the bird have a predictable sine wave pattern because you know, it's good for players to predict in long term. If I keep changing the bird movement kind of animation, it makes it like it makes the game a little unplayable because you don't know whether the bird will swoop down at you or not. So, yeah, and and the fact that you can jump like above the bird is actually a, a good thing in disguise because it means that uh you actually have the ability to avoid the bird by jumping over it if you time your jump well. I think I still like this aspect of the game. Oh, look, <laughs> you can't avoid the bird while jumping. Oh, no. Okay, that was surprising. Okay, that was surprising. I, I thought the dino could jump and avoid it, but apparently the dino couldn't. So we look at the dino transform. 
Actually, that's that's awesome, you know. Yeah, unavoidable, but it's awesome. So the dino can go up to three, which is exactly where the bird can fly to. Perfect. I I like the bird already. Yeah, look at this bird, so irritating. Whoa, 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 whoa! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> Yeah, it's actually kind of tough to play this game because uh okay so another thing that could be done oh no the bird feels like it's flying a bit slowly compared to the the change of landscape okay so there's some problem with having the bird being too like near the cactus because the player can't really react and you know there's not much time for the player to think about it because uh, in, in t-rex run you will just die when the bird comes but i think it's fine you know it's, it's, it's like that's the fun of the game right but you have predictable patterns and you just try to predict it look at that look at that almost died there but close shave okay this is okay yeah so a predictable pattern helps the player in predicting whether or not he should like jump or not which I think it's a, a good thing to have in a game. Yeah, if not, when a player dies, he will just curse the game and say, this game sucks. Yeah. So you see variability in the bird. Up, down, up, down. So towards the end, when you move fast enough, the bird is like... So I'm just thinking whether the frames per second for the dino, you could actually animate the frames per second for the, the jump and for the walking to be a bit faster when... When you know when you're moving faster and faster, that would be quite funny actually. Because like when you walk very fast, the dino will look <laughs> super hilarious. Which you see now when the game progresses, like because it's like a little chill. So even when the cactus start moving faster and faster, the dino doesn't look like he's sweating at all. Which I think is not right. We want the dino to look like he's making a lot of effort to run. So maybe the walking animation, the frames per second, could be increased as the speed of the game increases okay so i'm that's one thing to do the second thing is under disable double jump see now you can jump many many times which is not what we want to achieve we want the player to be only able to jump once and uh, his jump can only happen when he's touching the ground so that's the condition okay so we have to let's just fix this right now right here right now yeah it's not that difficult to fix so we have this tech ground right so in our dino script okay um no i think it's in game manager script okay actually why don't we put the, the jump on the dino script itself rather than do it here Yeah, I mean, only the my rigid part is here, but actually there's no real need to put the dino here, isn't it? Yeah, we could just get the dino to load the game over. We can take away the dino here. We can take away the rigid body, my rigid. Oh, we have an animator here also. We can take away the animator as well. Yeah. So purely just do the game logic here. The animator and the uh, this part here can be done in the dino itself. So um, let's see here. You can put this part in the dino. Okay, and then the part that caused the dino to jump, where is it? Here, this part. So the score all this can still be done in the game manager got three already oh, oh what do you mean by got three miniature <laughs> oh you mean three viewers is it <laughs> oh yes yes thanks so much yeah yeah now I'm, I'm streaming only like one time a week one or two times because like i'm busier now but i do like to stream games like me creating games so yeah, I'll continue streaming.
Yeah, uni just started last week. Yeah, quite busy nowadays. Okay, so anyway, um, now we go to the dino itself. Uh, we would have a void update here. Okay, and over here, we then check whether or not. So over here, we have this my rigid my anim right. So we we need to create this. So this one is actually under private variables. Okay, rigid body two D my rigid. Okay, rigid bot. Oh, sorry. Um, animator. Anim. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether or not I included extra packages for this. Looks like there isn't, so there's no need to include here. So, um, over here at the start itself, we will need to assign this. So, because it's on the game object itself, so my rigid equals to get component. We can just get the component of rigid body two D. And same thing for my anim. Okay, this should be my anim. We also get the component of the animator. Then in update we can do this and then we will jump in. Okay, so uh I changed a bit of the game logic. Let's just check whether it's okay. Rigid body 2D could not be found. Okay, so um it's actually rigid body without the capital B. So it's like that. Yeah, let's see now. Let's see whether it works. Okay, so okay, so now I'm controlling the dyno by the I know prefab itself. Oh, look at that. Oh, that was a close shave. That was a close shave. Yeah. So I would like to um, incrementally make the player feel challenged. Okay. The bird should only come out later to kill the player off. Uh, maybe after five to 6,000 points. Maybe 5,000 points, the bird can come out. Uh, if not, the bird should uh, not appear until like... Uh, so we incrementally increase the number of obstacles that appear to like kill off the player. Uh, based on the score, so you know the the higher the level you are, the more obstacles that can appear to like to to destroy you. Like in the actual T Rex run, uh, when the bird comes out, it's also like more or less signifies game over because it's so hard to avoid the the bird. Oh, but look at that! Look at that! Look at the cactus! Oh, look at that! I'm pretty good at this game. <laughs> sure, I feel so egoistic saying that, right? Wow, I. I didn't expect to survive so long. Quick. Oh, look at that. Close shape is good. That's why our collider we put so small. So that the player feel good. The player will feel good. Ah, damn it. Yeah. Okay, so um game logic coded. Uh now we need to do the jump. Okay, so over here. Alright, if we are not touching the ground, okay, we cannot jump. So over here. We need to add a condition where when only when you touch the ground then you jump okay what condition is this so it's actually the is touching layers uh unity thing so so we need to use a collider and then we ask the collider whether is it uh, or not is touching any layer so let's see okay so um Okay, this doesn't tell me anything, so let's see the other one. Okay, so is touching layers, the collider itself, and then the layer mask. Okay, so so what collider did I use for my dino? What collider did I use? I use the I use a box collider. So we have a box collider 2D here. My box. Okay, and over here we at the start we just get the component, get component, uh, box collider to the, and uh, with this we can ask we can query uh, Unity whether or not. Okay, is touching layers I think it's S. Okay, and then we have this layer mask. Okay, so how do we set the layer mask? Okay, so. Layer mass unity. Okay, so uh, we can do this layer mass dot get mass. Okay, and then this will give us uh returns the equivalent layer mass for all of them. So we can get mass 
whatever uh, variable we have inside here. So restarting layer, okay, layer mass dot get mass, and then the layer what we want to get is ground. Okay, like that is touching layers, and then one more. Yeah, so only when you press space and you are not touching the ground, only jump if you are pressing space and are not touching the ground because oh sorry and are touching the ground because if you are not touching the ground it means that you, you know we don't allow a double jump in this game although it could be coded in you can have a variable called like number of jumps before you touch the ground then the moment you touch the ground uh you reset that variable to be zero that could be done okay these touching layers does not exist in the current context so it must be a physics 2D dot is touching layers. So implemented in physics unity engine dot physics 2D module. So fixed update can be used also because of physics. Uh, if you are doing doing physics uh, updates, you can use is uh, a fixed update to change it. Ah, I see. So it's not this. It's doing like this. My box dot is touching layers. <laughs> And the E is a small letter I. So let's try to see whether this works. Yes. Collider 2D dot is touching layers. Yeah, let's take a look at this track to see what's wrong, okay? So is it get component collider 2D? But I use box collider 2D though, so does box collider 2D not have? Because I mean, I can also use collider 2D. Actually, all of them are collider 2D, so I guess it's fine to just use collider 2D. I mean, it's a superset of box collider. I'm not sure, but let's see. Okay, uh, I have to Google this collider 2D is touching layers. I always thought it's like my collider dot is touching layers. It's weird because I do have a collider 2D already. I got my component called collider 2D. Okay, and then I'm supposed to be able to use this function my collider dot is touching Layers always capital I. Okay, let's see whether it works now. I just changed the E touching layers to a capital I. Wow, okay, all right. Okay, now I can't even jump. Okay, now there's an issue jumping. So, um, I'm not sure. Okay, if Maybe I don't have a component called Collider 2D. Maybe I need to use Box Collider 2D. Now it's possible. Okay, so there's now Collider 2D didn't work. Maybe because it's... okay, so can jump now. Okay, so why? Why is this the case? So if 
the box is touching the layer, layer must stop get mass ground. So we need on the ground. Oh, okay. I, I, I get it. We haven't created a ground layer. Yeah, that's not that was a tag. So let's create a, a layer called ground. Okay. We go back to our ground and then we convert this to a ground layer. And I think that should. Yes. So now I can only jump when I touch the ground. Okay. So if I don't touch the ground, I cannot jump. Okay. That's exactly the kind of uh, gameplay that I would like to do. Okay, there's actually other things that we can do right now. Um, so far, the cactus only appears like one at a time. Uh, we could have cactus that appear two at a time, okay? Because I think two at a time is uh, harder to jump over. Uh, one at a time is quite easy to jump over. And uh, that, that means that it's not that challenging for the player. We want the player to be like, maybe you can have cactus that's one, two, and three. At a time so that the player will be challenged to think how best to jump over it okay so how do we do this so we have a cactus already over here so in our prefabs get the cactus okay so this is one cactus uh one way to do it will be to like similarly as what has been done before we create a box for the cactus a cactus container and then like um we will just you know, apply the prefab to the cactus collider. And then in the cactus itself, we can spawn as many cactus as possible. Maybe align them with a horizontal layout. You know, no, you can't do horizontal layout group here. Oh, actually we can. So it looks like the horizontal layout group can be done even in the cactus itself. So maybe in this cactus, Okay, uh, we could have a new object called cactus container. Just like the bird container. So in cactus container, okay, uh, what will happen is we will put in the cactus. Okay, let's just check if I have a horizontal layout group. Middle center. Zero, zero. So here, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so my cactus position was minus 1.32. So let's, uh, let's be true to it and also make this at a minus 1.32 in the cactus container in my cactus itself. Okay, in my cactus itself, I can, I can then create like multiple objects. Don't know, horizontal layout group middle center. It's not exactly putting on the different objects. It's just putting them at the same area. Okay, so uh, this method kind of uh, I guess it's not that ideal. Perhaps what we can do is we can just you know, uh, let's just delete this. We can just find different images of cactuses or we can just copy and paste into a so we have this cactus image we can copy and paste the cactus image into Vita and then create more cactuses so maybe let's just do that yeah so instead of doing it manually in the script which uh, proves to be like a little challenging <laughs> <coughs> sorry what we can do is we can actually use this cactus and then we can just like create multiple copies of it. Okay, so let's see. Can I copy and paste this? Oops. Insert as new layer. Sure, insert as new layer. So okay, I'm not too sure how do I like copy and paste this thing. Edit. Do with pattern. I don't know. Okay, let's remove this. No, don't save it. Okay. Image. OK, 
Okay, let's just search Krita help. Krita duplicate image. Okay, let's. Okay, so I have one layer here, control C, control V, I have another layer. And how do I shift this layer to another part? Oh. Oh, okay, that's, that's actually kind of nice. What happened to it? Yeah, I, I kind of like this idea that we have two cactus like this side by side. The only issue is that now the background doesn't have any fill, so... Or, you know, the other solution, which is possibly easier, is to just, you know, download a new image of a cactus. No, don't save. Okay, so cactus. Yeah, we can just download, like, an image of another cactus and then maybe just copy and paste that image multiple times uh, just thinking whether or not you know i should just do this inside here so like in the cactus itself i can actually create two different cactus shift one a little bit like uh let's see is that horizontal layout good for game object. For sprites. I think it's possible actually to use horizontal layout group. Just not sure why it didn't work just now. So let's just try the horizontal layout group. Okay, uh child alignment middle center. Okay, and then over here. Let's put this in here. If not actually we don't even need a horizontal layout group, okay. Where are my cactuses? Reset position. So in my game object, maybe I just reset the position as well. In my game object, I can make this to minus 1.36, like what it was just now. Okay, and in the cactus, maybe we just call this cactus 1, cactus 2, cactus 3, and so on. Yeah, so we can actually like configure how many cactus we want to appear, uh, maybe by a script in this game object, Okay, which will then configure when we spawn the cactus, how many cactus will appear. And we can then simply just offset it by, oh sorry, it's the X position, offset it however we want. Okay, so we can do like that. Um, maybe maximum I'll have three cactus. So uh, 0 0.7, maybe 6, 8, 7. I think 7 is good. I'll duplicate this and call this cactus 3. 
Okay, in Google's game, it's up to four cactuses or four cacti. Okay, so I could do this. Maybe this cactus could be like a flip in the x-axis like that. Yeah, but I think up to three cactus will be good enough for, for the game that uh, we are coding. So, so this one will be cactus spawner, okay. Cactus container, maybe cactus container. And instead of the cactus containing their own, uh, okay, so we have, I think it's fine. Yeah, we could have the container and then inside here we have all the cactus moving one by one. So let's just try, okay. To just make this cactus container here okay i'll delete this okay and in the game uh in the cactus spawner we will spawn the cactus container so rather than the cactus we spawn the so the cactus container is made up of the cactus itself so we will spawn the we will spawn the cactus container oh no oh no oh no okay it's proving a bit hard to wait, wait. It's proving a bit hard to control. Okay, so let's let's try again. So in the cactus spawner, I want to put the cactus container here. There we go. Okay, so so this would be uh three cactus together right now. For all my cactuses, all my cacti. So I want it to be either three cactus, two cactus, or one cactus. Okay, I don't know whether I want to do four cactus. Four is a little... Yeah, maybe we could try four. Yeah, maybe we could try four. Yeah, so in this cactus container, I can also do one more. So cactus four. So this cactus four can be at position 1.4 maybe, like that. And then I flip my X. Yeah, so up to four cactus total. Okay, let's just override this. So uh, in the cactus container itself, okay, I would like to uh, then set the cactus to appear. So it's either going to be one cactus, two cactus, three cactus, or four cactus. So we will need a script here. So over here is create C sharp script. We call the script cactus appear. Okay, uh, it's kind of can't add scripts. Okay, so let's see here. So over here in this cactus appear script, okay, we have this thing called public game object cactus. Yeah. Okay, so over here in the start, okay, we have a random number. Okay, so over here, let's just do public variable. So so this one is just to control how many cactus come out private variables so uh, in our private variables we have a int num cactus actually we don't really need this variable but i think we can just put it here because later we do random dot range so random dot range from one to okay actually it's from zero to cactus dot count okay so this will be this will be a list game objects and then we count the number, number of cactus and then we determine how many cactus we want is it one cactus two cactus three cactus or four cactus okay i'm, I'm counting it wrongly it's really one cactus two cacti three cact or uh, whatever yeah you get what i mean yeah cacti means two cactus is like plural okay two cacti okay okay so basically <laughs> over here we have num cactus at the start we give it a, a range between zero to the cactus dot count which is three cactus or four cactus okay depending on how many cactus we are we have okay and then over here we just display only the cactus in the range so uh what we do here is very simple for int i equals zero i smaller than cactus dot counts okay i plus plus okay over here if okay i is smaller than num cactus smaller than equals to smaller or equals to enough cactus then we should then we then we show it okay cactus dot set active will be true if not it'll be false okay so i cannot call it cactus i must call it cactus i dot set active else cactus i dot set active false and that's it for the cactus script i hope 
now let's paste the music and uh, see any errors that appear. If not, let me just put the cactus here. Cactus size four. Okay, and then we can put this game object inside one, two, three, four. Very nice. Apply all. Okay, so let's just uh, delete this. I think in the prefab it already has change this to cactus like that so it will appear randomly between two to four sorry one to four very nice see one cactus one cactus a bird two cactus four cactus three cactus oh it's actually pretty challenging because you must time your jump quite well to avoid that oh whoa 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 almost died there almost like there okay so now i like to just check whether i will turn another like okay for the one cactus i'll just okay very good so it means that the object is uh generated correctly so other than a uh, cactus that is like that we also want to have a gigantic cactus gigantic cactus that um that can appear and you know like it means that you need to really like jump very very high Okay, um, let's see whether I can find a different image for that because like in the T-Rex jump game, there's some cactus that is super huge and like super big and I really like this cactus image, but can I use it? Is it free? Bestclipart.com, yeah, yeah bestclipart.com and just copy and paste this image. Uh, I think needs, you need to register to download this. So yeah, one way to do it will be to just use this existing cactus image and then you know just make it bigger. Okay, actually there's there's, there's so many more. I like this, I like this. Cactus animados. Okay, so we have a cactus big right now. Okay, uh, let's just... See, scripting is so useful. So we have a cactus big. Okay, I wonder if this PNG is going to be totally white. Or is it not going to be totally white? No, we only... Okay, so it's totally not white. So we have to use Krita now to make it into a transparent background so that we can use it well for this... So let's see in Krita we put in this cactus or cacti or a cactus cactus yeah, cactus. Over here we have this color too. We just yeah okay good. So this will be my huge ass cactus that will appear. Why is it still white? <laughs> okay, so um something's wrong. Okay, it shouldn't it shouldn't even have any white remains here. So um, it's totally white now, which is not what I intended. I want it to be like, oops, I think this was good. This is good. Uh, just need to color this properly now uh, in terms of my clear brush. Give me an orange color. Color this orange. Okay. Um, I want to color this orange, but kind of limited me. Okay, so I'm just thinking whether I can do like a smart clock. Yeah, I mean, this is such a nice uh, image, but okay, uh, let's see. This image is very nice. Okay, so I deck just you know use a free hand oh magnetic selection too. What's this? Oops. Oh actually this is quite good. Oh 
Oh, it's cool. It helps you find the ages automatically. Okay. Well, let's see whether it works first. Okay, I'm not too sure whether it works. La, 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 la. Oh, I like this, it just sticks to the ages. Very nice. Okay, now the question is whether I can crop it. Um, um, <laughs> what happened to the cropping? Similar contour selection too. Oh, wow. Okay, done, done. Okay. Okay, so let's see. File, save as PNG. Similar contour selection too, remember everyone. Similar contour selection too. Uh, somehow it looks like it's not exactly done properly, but who knows? Aha. Uh -huh. It looks like there's a bit of white in there. Ah, very nice. Very nice. So maybe over here is like kind of big. Maybe we reduce it by half first. Just put in this big ass cut. This big. Like this here. Okay, this is a bit too much for my cactus. I wonder if you can even jump over it. <laughs> it looks it looks kind of huge. Five five, yeah, maybe five five like that. Okay, then uh, similar to the cactus, what did I add in for the cactus? I added in a uh, box collider, rigid body, 2D. Okay, so we do the same thing over here. We add in collide, uh, rigid body 2D, dynamic with no gravity. Okay, we add in the box collider. Okay, over here, I'm not sure whether I'll use box collider, maybe a capsule collider. Mesh collider, maybe. H collider? No, 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 not H collider. Polygon collider? Yeah, uh, I mean, that kind of work because, like, it's kind of a. So they automatically use polygons to fill up this. Because this shape is kind of a weird shape. So we want to make sure that, you no. Know, So over here we can even adjust the edges a bit. We can make the but I think I'm not gonna bother. Yeah. I kind of like their default way of doing the collider. Okay, so this is good. Okay, then we're gonna have a move left component because uh we want to add a force to it so that it will move left. And the cactus big we will add it into the scene. Okay, let's just see how it looks like. I want to see like whether I can jump over it. Okay, uh, something wrong with my game. It's a bit too like small. Okay. So yeah, well, look at that. Look at that precision in jumping. Oh, this game is pretty hard already. <laughs> this T-Rex jump is pretty hard. You need to achieve precision in your jumps. If not, you're gonna hit the spikes, hit the cactus. Okay, this can be suitable for like a hard mode. So maybe the speed don't need to increase so fast let them experience all the possible hazards yeah i think it's good enough so uh what i like to do now is so since my cactus bit is here so the good thing about scripting is that now in my cactus spawner i just need to change this to tree okay and then i can put the cactus big Prefect, where's the cactus big prefect? Uh, 
Then why do I have two cactus big prefix? Okay, this is not a prefix, this is a sprite. Okay, so this should go into the sprites, uh, go to the images folder. So in this cactus big prefix, I should add this into the cactus spawner. So we have a cactus big. No, sorry. The cactus big should come as the second obstacle. The bird should come as the third obstacle. So this should do. So maybe instead of cactus spawner, this... Okay, I can't really change this, but I can change the name here. This can be called enemy spawner or obstacle spawner. Because we spawn the obstacles here using this obstacle spawner. So rename the file. Okay, so over here will be... Okay, this one will be an obstacle spawner, I think. And over here, we have three different obstacles. Awesome. Very nice. So now we have three obstacles that can potentially form. One is the cactus of uh, up to four. Okay, from one to four. The other will be the big ass big X cactus. I uh, still haven't seen it coming out yet. Uh, it should appear. Unless it got stuck. Yeah, uh, I think it might be a little too low for the big cactus. Maybe uh, 0 .0, minus 0 0.5 would do for this. Okay, let's try again. Okay, just this now I didn't see any of the big cactus appearing. So it must be some error that, that, that occurred that caused it not to appear. Ah, uh, there we go. Wow, this is tough. Okay, okay, there's some problem right now because like uh I can't exactly jump between the two. So this obstacle spawner, um the mean seconds I will need to increase it a bit, maybe 1.5 seconds. Because if, if not the the big ass cactus, I'm not able to jump and it's a little unfair to the player if I'm not able to jump past two obstacles that appear like one one by one right behind the other. So can jump over this, yeah. Can jump over this. I think it's challenging enough. This game is quite challenging already. Like you have different cactus, different birds that move up and down. The cactus that have different shapes and sizes, and everything looks smooth. I'm quite, I'm pretty impressed with uh, with what we have right now. So the next thing that we can do in the next session is to add music to it. The background could also move together with the, uh, so we can do a moving background, a scrolling background that moves and moves faster and faster. I mean, that original uh, T-Rex front, they do have a day and night transition. That could be done as well. Like we can make the thing go in the morning, go to the night, we have to change our background. That could be all done in, uh, in, in, in the next few sessions. Yeah, I'm not sure how, long, how many sessions it will take, but I kind of like the gameplay already. We fixed the... Uh, we fix the, the double jump issue. We make the enemies more varied. Okay, we have different amount of cactuses that appear. We have uh, the bird moving up and down this in, in this stream session. Uh, we have a big cactus like this. <laughs> and yeah, essentially, uh, I think the enemies are all created already. Okay, so what needs to be done next is just some touch up of maybe the background that will, sh that will change alongside the enemies coming. So um, that could be done. Um, we could make the dino move faster and faster with the tempo. Like the sprite for the movement could be faster and faster. That That's one thing that we could do. Okay. But other than that, I think um, I'm pretty happy with uh, progress so far for this game. And yeah, I would like to end the stream here. And yeah, do give me suggestions if you'd like to see me code other games like yeah, that you're interested in, other popular games. I can probably try to recreate them with Unity. Uh, 2D games, of course, yeah, because I'm not very well versed with 3D yet. And yeah, if not, um, that's all. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.